highly near algebra students. So this is the second makeup video on uh, cross product and triple product. So in this video, we're gonna we're gonna just look at the properties of the cross product. Uh, we're gonna look at the norm and the direction, and that's gonna be it. Afterwards, we're gonna go on to the triple product. Okay. So almost everything is on the board. The only thing I have to present is like uh, the, the thing that I'm talking at the bottom, but don't focus on this yet. Let's go on the top, okay? So properties of the cross product. If you cross product a vector with itself, it's gonna give the zero vector, okay? By the way, um, or okay, let's, let's just state the five properties and afterwards we will discuss it. So, uh, cross producting u and v is the uh, opposite of cross producting v and u. Okay, so this is called anti commutativity, right? So if you permute u and v, it costs you a negative sign. Okay, so be careful about that. Okay. Then um, this is associative with scalar multiplication, right? That's how it's called. So if you do u cross kv, it's going to be the same as uh, doing u cross v first and then multiplying with k. Then the fourth property, it is uh, distributive uh, over addition, obviously. So uh, if, you add u, if you add v and w first and then take the cross product with u, it's going to give the same result as if you cross product u and v cross product u and w and add up the result, right? This is distributivity. The fifth property, um, u cross v uh, is equal to zero vector if and only if u and v are parallel, okay? Uh, the proof of five is in the YouTube supplements. Watching it is optional, okay? Uh, recommended, but optional, okay? Uh, now, what I want to talk about is the norm of u cross v. Okay, so the norm is the, the norm of u times the norm of v times the sine of the angle between the two. Okay? Um, and, uh, okay, so actually, let's just have a look at this. I drew a triangle over here, but I'm going to give a little bit more detail. Okay? So, um, what does it mean? Okay, so this right here, or actually none of these are uh, vectors actually. So let's let's not give too much detail. So uh, that's it. Like the norm of u cross v will be the norm of u times the norm of v times the sine of theta. The proof uh, that I can show you is actually quite tedious. Okay, so it's done in my notes, and it follows from drawing this triangle. So by so in other words, like you just imagine that the angle theta that we're talking is over here, okay? And uh, let's say that this side is norm of u, norm of v. Then you have norm of u, norm of v cosine theta here and norm of u, norm of v sine theta over here, okay? And the idea behind the proof is that this turns out to just be the dot product, u dot v, okay? So the way to, the way to do the proof is to use the Pythagorean formula on this triangle. So you're going to write that this side squared, right? This side squared is going to be equal to this side squared minus this side squared. So uh, as you can see here, uh, this you write here. Okay, but don't forget the Pythagorean formula. You have to square the sides. And as you can see, this side you write here. And then what you do, what you do to prove this is that you're going to simplify this side and by simplifying it, and it's, I, I'm warning you, if you want to do it, it's totally fine. It's good, but it's algebraically tedious. Okay. You have to work with the components. You one, you two, you three, write all of these. And you're going to realize that simplifying the right hand side will give you this. Okay. Which will end the proof. Not mandatory by any means, right? Uh, so I think this you could just remember. The direction of u cross v. Now this is actually quite interesting. Um, it is orthogonal to both u and v. Okay. 
so this is due to the triple product. And what do we mean by orthogonal uh, to both U and V? So actually, let's write this down. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm still gonna write this in black. But what do I mean by this? Okay, what I mean is that if you take the dot product of U dot U cross V, okay, you're gonna get zero. And the same goes if you take V dot U cross V. You're also gonna get zero. And it turns out that this is a scalar triple product. So we will get there very, very soon. Uh, and it is due to the properties of the triple product. So we will postpone the proof of this uh, when we cover the triple product, which will be the next video pretty much. Now, okay, so you know that it's orthogonal to both vectors u and v. Okay, so now let's erase this and I will show you like uh, the two possibilities. Okay, so let's let's continue talking about the direction of u and v. Direction of u cross v. Okay, so we know that it's orthogonal to both u and v. What does it mean? It means that if ever we have like a vector uh, u, so u could be like this, let's say. This would be u. And let's say that v is uh, something like uh, this. Okay, now you have to imagine perspective here, which is not easy, okay? Uh, I'm gonna draw the cross product in purple. So the resulting vector, uh, so something like this, this will be a u cross v, okay? Uh, will be perpendicular to both a v and u, okay? So uh, it makes sense only in R3, right, in space. But then we have a problem. Is it this? Or maybe it could be the one that's pointing down, right? It's possible that uh, u cross v could be this one, right? So, um, okay, so how do we decide? Okay, uh, so because this also is another vector that's like perpendicular to uh, both of them, right? So. This is why it's important to actually make a decision. And the decision is based on how we orient our three standard basis vectors. Okay, so let's actually write that down first. So uh, the decision, decision depends on how uh, I, J, K, are oriented okay and uh, the way of orienting the standard basis vectors in our tree ijk um, there's two rules that are commonly known okay uh, so so this is a convention by the way right it's we choose to orient them that way uh, we orient them by the right and rule so right and rule or the screw rule, okay? And it's funny because I wrote it here, but, um, but that's it. Like I, I wanted to actually give more details so you can forget about this. All right, so what is that right and rule slash screw rule, okay? Let's erase this to give uh, ourselves more space. Okay, so the right and rule. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, again sketch uh, the vectors uh, u. So I'm, I'm actually going to scale them down a little bit so that it's easier to follow. Uh, so we're going to get, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually very good. So, okay, let's have U that will be like this and V that will be like this.
Okay, so uh, the way it works, and it's not really, as I, as I can see, it's not very easy to uh, use in that case. It's, oh yeah, that's it. You have to use your right hand, okay? So very important, it works with the right hand. <laughs> because I always mess up and use, and use the left hand. I prefer this rule, by the way, so I will, I will show you that. So, okay. Again, vector U, vector V. So how does that work? Okay, so you point your thumb along U, which would be somehow like this, right? And then you point your index towards the vector V, so something like this. And Well, if the vectors were really flat on the board, which they were not intended to be, they were intended to be somehow like this, then this is the direction of your third vector, okay? So it points like it's the vector that points outwards your hand, your right hand, okay? So that's why it's called the right hand rule. So it means that in this scenario, it's the purple vector that is correct, okay? And the orange vector is incorrect. Okay, so this one is incorrect and this one is correct. Okay, so this is the one that follows the convention. That's what we mean, okay? So uh, we have to imagine here that uh, that's it, the, that V is behind you, okay, if that makes sense, that, uh, like, actually, let, let's, let's actually write this thing, let's write this thing, V is behind you, in this drawing, of course, okay, so that will be the U uh, cross V, so again, what is the right hand rule, let's write it down, you place your thumb here, Okay, and here you place your index, and then this will be your middle finger. All right, uh, what is the screw rule that, that I actually much prefer? And unfortunately, I see that I'm missing space here, so this is the right-hand rule. The screw rule, I will uh, do it right underneath. So... Let's draw the same two vectors, okay? So the vector u, that is like this, and the vector v, that is like this, okay? So uh, the idea is to imagine that there is a screw. So let's uh, draw that screw in, um, let's draw that screw, that screw in uh, black, okay? So something like this. Okay, it doesn't really matter. But then the idea is that you want to rotate U to V, okay? So, um, so rotate uh, the vector U to the vector V. So in other words, like your vectors are like this, Okay, and what you imagine doing is, as you can see, because U is here and U and V is here, what you're doing is you're unscrewing, okay? But sometimes if U was like this and V was like this, you would be screwing, right? So the direction at, at which you screw or, well, the direction at which you go will depend if you screw or unscrew, okay? So in this case, in this scenario, so you have like U and V, you turn like this. So you would happen to unscrew like this. That would be the direction of your U cross V. Okay? So uh, that's it. The direction um, of U uh, cross V is the one of uh, the motion of the screw. <clears throat> All right, so, okay. Uh, right hand rule is right here. And this is the screw rule. All right, this is it for now. So in the next video, we're gonna see, so video number uh, three now, I think, yes? 
we're going to see the scalar triple product. See you there.